We're here. We're going to introduce a couple of other people here in a second, but uh, the reason we're here today is because today you had 13 law enforcement professionals who authored an amicus, an amicus brief that was filed in Rodney Reed's case. In that brief, it was said very well when those 13 law enforcement officials and professionals wrote, wrongful convictions and wrongful executions are not only unjust, they also undermine the legitimacy of our laws and the public trust therein. We know that Texas has convicted the wrong person before. And, and Mr. Reed's attorneys have presented compelling evidence that the state is about to execute the wrong man in this case. We as a state should not take the irrevocable step now when significant evidence of Mr. Reed's innocence has not undergone a thorough and independent review. I, I am proud to stand with those law enforcement professionals who authored that amicus brief and who have made this point so clearly. With that, I will now uh, turn the podium over to my colleague in the Texas Legislature, State Representative Vicki Goodwin. Good afternoon. I'm speaking out against the execution of Rodney Reed, who is set to be executed November 20th. I'm deeply concerned that the state of Texas is about to execute a man who is potentially innocent of the charges against him. As I learned more about this case, I am more convinced that he did not receive a fair trial, that there was racial bias against Rodney Reed, and Rodney Reed did not kill Stacy Stites. Many facts have come to light that were not disclosed during the trial. I will be sending a letter to Governor Abbott asking that he grant a 30-day reprieve. I am also asking the Board of Pardon and Parole to review the evidence, including new evidence in this case. I am not in my call. Alone in my call for a reprieve, Rodney Reed has a large group of supporters, and I would now like to turn it over to Deke Pierce. Thank you very much, uh, Senator Watson and Representative Goodwin, for uh, you know taking the bold step of what myself and several other law enforcement officers are trying to do. It's what's the right thing to do. Um, I have a prepared statement that I'm going to read. My name is Deke Pierce. As I approach nearly three decades in law enforcement, I can say that I've always been very proud of my career choice. Law enforcement is a profession if you can understand if you're not actually a part of it. It's a career I chose because I wanted a job that I enjoyed and I, wa and I wanted to feel like I was making a difference. There are incredible responsibilities that come with wearing the badge that so many of us wear. And it also comes with carrying a, a, a burden of responsibility as well. I chose this path for each of you to bear that burden for each of you to protect the innocent from those that would do them harm, even if it meant to give my own life. Too often these days you hear about the downside of being in law enforcement. You hear about the bad apples in law enforcement who make the rest of us look bad and question the actions of all the good that we do provide. However, working in law enforcement, it offers a sense of belonging and family that most will not understand. There is a practical and selfless reason for being a law enforcement officer and opportunities for us to do good for the community to make a positive difference in people's lives. We are here today to do our part. In the case of Mr. Rodney Reed, to do our part to right a wrong. By filing this amicus brief with United States Supreme Court, this brief is sponsored by myself and 12 other active and retired law enforcement officers with over 250 years of combined law enforcement experience. We each care deeply about the criminal justice system and the rule of law. While that often means holding wrongdoers accountable, it is equally important goal of the justice system to avoid punishing the innocent as well. Wrongful convictions and especially wrongful executions are not only unjust, but they also undermine the legitimacy of our laws and public trust. In turn, it tarnishes the image of the system that we as law enforcement officers swore to uphold. 
While many of us do not oppose the imposition of the death penalty in appropriate cases, we all agree that cases call for a greater degree of reliability when the death penalty, death penalty is imposed. We have come together to say that such reliability is lacking in Mr. Reed's case, as there are questions as to whether all pertinent and critical evidence was introduced during trial. Justice requires that evidence of this case be reheard before this man can be executed, and failing to do so would be a travesty of justice. Mr. Reed's conviction simply lacks the necessary reliability. The record in this case includes significant new evidence that may potentially exonerate him and implicate another. Raise serious doubt to Mr. Reed's guilt. For that reason, we collectively and respectively, respectively urge the court to ensure that Mr. Reed's case gets another more thorough review. Regardless of how we got here, we all believe that executing an innocent person is a miscarriage of justice. Not only would moving forward with Mr. Mr. Reed's execution be cruel and immoral, it would also undermine the rule of law and the, legit, and the legitimacy of the very system we, as law enforcement officers, swore to uphold. And uh, I, I, I didn't come to this decision lightly to get the ball rolling with this. And I first and foremost want to thank the other law enforcement officers that had the courage to stand with me to get this before the court. Um, a lot of times through my, my, uh, my career uh, as an officer, we're told not to have an opinion. And so we kind of keep that for ourselves, and we follow the law. But at times, in cases such as this, I think it's extremely important for us to have an opinion. And that's what brought me here today. Um, just a little brief history. Um, the beginning of 2019 is when I first met Sandra uh, Reed, the mother of Rodney, and Roderick Reed, the brother of Rodney. It was at an uh, event for a, a, another exoneree named Anthony Graves. And I was extremely apprehensive about going forward and, and introducing myself as a law enforcement officer, knowing what I know about the case, to the family. And Anthony Graves said, no, no, they're great folks. They would love to talk to you. And the first word out of their mouth is, absolutely, we need good law enforcement officers. And I knew they were good people. You know, um, they didn't have a, uh, a bad thing to say about law enforcement. Um, they're obviously unhappy about the outcome of this case. And I told them at that time just to keep hope. We have to keep hope. And, uh, and I've, I've spoken at other events before, and I've, always, I've been involved in pretrial, never post-conviction, so this is all new to me. And I want to thank the law firms that uh, got involved. I want to thank the Innocent Project as well. Um, Bryce Benjet has been fantastic, and I've talked to him a number of times. Uh, another thing that kind of took the Reed case, and I think uh, several folks here will agree with me, is the Dr. Phil show. Um, Dr. Phil came and interviewed Rodney, and that took it to the next level. Another thing uh, is, is Kim Kardashian and her star power has, has taken it to another, another level as well. And slowly but surely, there are other representatives and, and state officials that are coming out um, wanting to do the right thing as well. And I thank each and every one of that for having the, taking the bold move to do so. And that's all I have. Anybody have any questions or anything? So you're the instigator, so to speak, behind this? Thing? It would seem so. <laughs> and you rounded up uh, yes, sir. other law enforcement. Yes, sir. And like I said earlier, some were apprehensive about doing it. Um, you know, they're in fear for their jobs. And uh, I mean, I'm not in fear of losing my job. I've, I've talked to my boss. I, I know my office is getting uh, uh, probably tired of hearing me talk about it, you know? so. But we have to do, again, we have to, uh, if, if not me, somebody else, um, we as people, as citizens, need to step forward when we see an unjust. Thank you all. Thank you all very much.